24 hours is a long time to stay awake. So the first thing I would do was try to get a good eight hours of sleep so I could face the rest of the day with a, in a good mood. And uh, I, I would remember Andrew Marvel's comment, better at once our time devour than languish in his slow chat power. So it's lucky that I have a lot of good poetry in, in my head, like the coward dies many times before his death. The brave man tastes of death but once. So let's see, eight hours of sleep. Uh, so we have uh, quite a few hours. We have, uh, we have to have a good breakfast. I would join with my good wife and we would have a, a nice pot of tea. That would take, if we linger over it, another three hours. So what's that, 11 hours? And now we have 13 hours to go. How are we going to spend the next 13 hours? What I would suggest doing, if you want to have a good time and, and die in the great blow up while you're laughing, is to start reading P.G. Woodhouse out loud to one another. And uh, that would last a, a good long uh, time for the rest of the day. So when the great blow up came, they would find us giggling. Burning toast. When I was about three, four, I don't know how exact, but the age was, but a very young child. I was at breakfast with my parents and I was given the job, I'm so old now, we didn't have automatic toasters, of watching the toast in the toasters. And as soon as the toast was getting brown or smoke started rising from the toaster, I was to notify them and take them away from their orange juice or newspaper or whatever it was they were reading. And I would say, burning, burning. And, and they would say, okay, Donald, nice going, or some kind of praise I would, I would get. And to that early experience, I owe my sense of uh, respons social responsibility. I notice I do not like to make people around me uncomfortable. I'm a good Southerner in that way. I, I can't think of any item I own that I couldn't part with. The one item I think I treasure the most is a, a painting I inherited from my mother. Uh, it was by uh, an Italian painter, em immigrant, here, uh, emigre here, uh, named Bacchelli. It's a wonderful painting of a, of a Mississippi town, and it's called He Comes Towards Us. It's in my study. It reminds me of my mother. That's another. She was a marvelous person, born around 1900, but the only person I guess I knew in that adult world, along with my father, who was not a racist. And that's an anti-racist uh, painting. It's a wonderful painting, and I would be reluctant to part with it. But basically, there isn't anything I have that I feel I could not part with. I would get rid of educational constructivism. It's injured particularly injured all of us, all of our children. I mean, it's caused us to rank, our, our elementary schools rank 25th in the world. Uh, but it's injured particularly poor disadvantaged kids. So if you got rid of educational constructivism in the United States, that would do a heck of a lot for equity in, in our country. And that's the thing I would get rid of. How's that?